Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your November 1st to the 15th, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bulls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Oh, and two bonus cards, so that's super cool. So let's put these bonus cards right here. Okay, perfect. And now let's see what your chakra energy is for this time. Aquarius, November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Fantastic. So we're starting here with flexibility. Now this is the sacral chakra. This is where a lot of negativity is held from this life, from past lives. And that really does impair our flexibility. It also impairs the wisdom that we let into our lives. And this stance right here is one of letting in wisdom. So here with flexibility, it's a looking at, assessing, maybe assessing is a more kind of clinical word, word, it's, it's feeling, it's fully taking in and releasing a lot of what is holding us back. It's also being a little bit brutally honest with ourselves. Like, why am I staying stuck? Why am I sabotaging myself? Why can't I move myself forward? And it's not saying that you're going to fix everything in one day or just simply in this time period. It means that you're looking at things more openly, more honestly, more powerfully, more purposefully for yourself. And you're finding that you're opening up a door. You're finding that you're moving forward. And this is really breaking down barriers for you. And I would just sit. I mean, you could 
you could do this dance right here if you can, or get as close to it as you can, or just stand with your feet firmly planted in the ground, you know, or on the floor, and just visualize roots going down. And see yourself becoming like a willow tree, you know? Just have that visualization of when the wind blows, you embrace flexibility, you know? You move with that wind. Ooh, I just got chills. You move with that wind, Aquarius. And yes, that means some things shed away because willow trees drop their, their branches, drop their, yeah, their branches much more easily than, let's say, oak trees do. But that's because they're getting rid of the weight that does not move. They're getting rid of the limbs that are not flexible. And that's what we're doing within our hearts, our souls, and ourselves. We're saying, if it cannot bend and move with us, then maybe I do not need to hold on to it. And it's, it's a freeing of the self that you are really moving forward in. And it leads you to Mother Earth. It leads you to embracing, you know, kind of the Earth Mother mentality, being, again, grounded to the Earth, empowered. This is the Earth Star Chakra, located six inches below your feet. This is a sense of power and grace coming to you. And there's going to be a, a feeling, Aquarius, and you kind of fall to this rather naturally, that I'm supposed to be giving. I'm supposed to be, you know, completely understanding all the time. I'm supposed to be kinder than, than those around me. You know, that is, that is part of who you are. You, you have a greatness to your soul. And so here, you're going to think, okay, I just give and give and give. But the Earth Mother is saying here, you know, Mother Earth is saying, I give, but I also teach. I house, but I also, you know, make sure that you're kind of on your feet. You know, blizzards come, winter comes, rain, you know, hurricanes, snow, tornadoes. You know, there's a fierceness while there is a nurturing, while we, we walk upon this earth. And it's a power, it's a beauty, but there's also a ferocity. You know, hailstorms, this is what you're seeing here. There's that intensity around you. And that's what you're embracing as you, you ground yourself to this world and as you ground yourself to your power, to your understanding, and you embrace your flexibility. And it leads you to visualization. It leads you to the opening of the third eye, because this is the third eye chakra, and visualizing what you want, what you desire, what you need, where it is that you want to be, what you're questioning, you know, what you're hoping for, what you're looking at. And this is a sense of visualizing yourself moving forward, of seeing it within your mind's eye. You can be having very powerful dreams during this time, Aquarius, or very also powerful intuition that moves you forward, that guides you forward, that has you looking at things in a new way, in a powerful way, in a greater way of understanding. And it's like, wow, wow, I am opening myself to this power, to this grace, to this purpose. And it's opening up a world to you that you hadn't anticipated, that you didn't think could be a part of yours, of, of your existence, of your understanding. And let's see here. So the left-hand side is your inner self. We have your heart, your emotional self, and we have the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the tarot has to say. So we're starting here with the Ten of Wands. And that's a huge thing for you. You're putting down the burdens that are too much. And Aquarius, for you, that's huge. That is huge. You're adding to the flexibility of spirit, the sacral chakra, the releasing of negativity, this life, past life. You have the Six of Cups coming forward. This is a sense of, of healing, of moving. You then have the Six of Wands and the King of Cups. And I think I did these in the right order. If not, this is the exact order that spirit wants them to be in. The six, of, the six of Wands is you moving forward in celebration. The King of Cups is you connecting to your heart, your soul. And that crown is right above you, which I love. You have the King, you have not the King, the Knight of Wands right here. This is passion, this is creativity, this is fire, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. This is going to be this is going to be even more intense with the King of, of Cups if you are born on the cusp with Pisces, right? If you have fire sign energy in you, that is also going to be a, a rather big deal, the, the passion that you're moving forward in. You're calling on your magic. You're calling on your power. There's temperance that guides you with Sagittarius energy, a balance coming in as you, as you truly embrace so much more than what you had ever thought you could be. 
and it leads you to being a page of cups. It leads you to being a student of your heart and like the impossible is becoming possible. There's a sense here of with the imagery, you know, when pigs fly. When pigs fly, I'll be able to be happy. When pigs fly, I'll be able to, you know, move on the path that I want to be on. And it's like the pigs are flying. You know, the pigs are flying. Things are moving forward. You have the hermit. Virgo energy right here. Time frame, August 23rd to September 22nd. There's a sense of pulling in. There's a sense of taking time, of quiet, of centering, of, of beauty, of understanding. It leads you to really focusing on the journey that you want to be on, on the passion that you are growing for yourself. And because you have the magician here, you're definitely taking this gift of the Ace of Pentacles. And it moves you as you, okay, as an Aquarius energy, right here with the Page of Swords. It moves you in passion. It moves you in determination. It moves you of, as being a student of your ideas, of seeing yourself move forward in a way that you didn't think you could. And then we have the star right here. This is you. This is the essence of you coming forward. You're represented by the star in the minor arcana, by the swords, by the star in the major arcana, by the swords in the minor arcana, okay? There is greatness within you. And your dreams, your hopes, your wishes, your desires are being heard by divinity, and that's huge. It then leads you to the three of pentacles, prosperity, success, bounty, hard work. Others are going to try and take credit for it? Absolutely. Are they going to actually be able to claim what you have created? or to be able to move forward in your greatness? No, they're not. They can do their best. They can muck things up most definitely. And there is a sense here, because of the power around you, beware of those who want to take you by eyes. Beware, especially in the public arena, where people sit there and you're not kind of, they're not going to view you as accessible as, yeah, as accessible as you once were. Like, there is something that you're doing here. There's something where you're pulling in and you're really seeing what it is that you desire. You're having that deep connection with your heart, your soul, and yourself. And people are going to think, well, why aren't you paying attention to me? Why aren't you cleaning up my mess? Why aren't you doing this, doing that? It's like, because this is about me and it's not about you. This is my life and I'm ruling it. And there's a power and a force to you here that is, that is extraordinary. It is absolutely needed and, and, and beautiful. Okay, so let's see here. Who are the people who you need to be? Who are the people who will aid you during this time? Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Aquarius. Who will be aiding Aquarius? Angels and spirit guides. Awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have the Prince of Cups, water sign, energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. This is a sense of following your heart. This is a person who follows their heart. They move very slowly, very methodically, very patiently, very passionately. And that's going to be something that really calls to you during this time. With the with this energy, with the people who aid, and then later on the people to be mindful of. These are people who we don't have to know in real life, but they embody this energy of the Knight of Cups, of somebody who defends the heart, of somebody who moves forward in the soul's truth, of somebody who looks at the bigger picture of what it is that you desire and really helps you move forward. There's something that is said, there's some kind of light bulb moment, and we see the light bulb moments really crowning you during this time, and they're also rooting you, that you know, you're looking at it or you're listening to something or you're watching something or, you know, you have a thought fly through your head and it's like, oh, wow, that's it, isn't it? And it puts you in alignment with your emotional self, with the passion that you have, with the beauty that you have. And then it leads you to the, the high priest. And the high priest is the Hierophant in the Rider Waite Smith deck. This is a Taurus energy, April 20th to May 20th. This is a person who can be a bit stubborn and they have an opinion, okay? It's very funny because... Victorian energies have this where I'm right. You know, I'm stubborn, I'm right, and I'm moving forward. They can be rather bullheaded. But there's something about this that you're really finding attractive during this time. And it's kind of like you are embodying that fierceness of spirit because there is a way to you and a way about you where you can see all different sides of the story. You can, you know, you can be very diplomatic, okay? And here it's like, no, this is my truth. This is something that 
I feel very strongly about, very passionately about. This is something that is rooting me within myself, within what I desire. And this is where this gift is really starting to bloom and blossom and, and take root. And you're going to find that this person helps you stand your ground, even if it's on a completely different topic. You're like, wow, I like the way they did this, or I like the way they presented, or, you know, I find this rather inspirational. And I can make my stance. You know, I can stand my ground. I can know my truth. And as you do so, it brings you to the Sagittarius energy, okay, which you have right here. Now you have it coming through in the people who aid. So this is a very positive energy, November 22nd to December 21st. This is somebody who is astoundingly curious, has a way of bringing people together. This is a person, and I'm really seeing this, and I laugh because it is rather funny. This is a person who you don't want to cross because they're very slow to anger. Even though they're a fire sign energy, I'm seeing them as having a long fuse, but once it's lit and once they've lost patience, it's like, my goodness, they're intense and they're fierce. There is a sense here where you're really admiring the fairness of who they are to themselves. Other people might not think it's fair, but to you, as you look at it and as you take in the knowledge, the passion, the the understanding, you're like, oh no, that was very fair. You know, that was very distinct and precise and, you know, and powerful. And that's going to be something that you are really drawn to. You're also very drawn to the mystical side of things, the spiritual side of things. And this is going to be something where this person really helps you dive deeper into that. You might never talk to them, but the knowledge that they bring forward, the questions that they ask, the way that they present things is going to be very alluring and very, very beautiful to you. You're tired. <laughs> we start off with the 10 of wands. You've completed a cycle passionately. And this means that you're looking at kind of the reason you get out of bed in the morning, the passion, the beauty, the, the power, the understanding. And what you're looking at is the way to move forward. And there's something that you've been carrying, that you've been carrying for too long. It's been too much and you're releasing it from you. Also, you have a tendency to pick up other people's burdens. And that's just part of your nature. That's who an Aquarius is. You try to smooth the waters. You try to add to the humanity of life. And as you do so, there are times where you spread yourself too thin. You take on too much. You need aid. That's why we have the oxen right here. We have the ox right here to be able to move you forward, to be able to carry the load that is too much for you. And as the burden is, is lifted, and as your strength is added to, you embrace passion, you embrace ideas, you embrace you know, determination, you look at things more openly, more honestly, more succinctly, more purely for yourself. And you're also looking at the passion that you carry. We all have dreams. You know, we all have ways that we want to move forward. And yes, if you boil them down to the very essence of it all, it can be very straightforward. Everybody wants to be secure. Everybody wants to be able to view themselves as a success. Everybody wants to be able to have people who love them in their lives. You know, things like that. It's like, okay, those could be universal truths, most definitely. But there's also a sense here of the passion within your heart that you are born with. And so when you look at things, you're going to have a tendency to play yourself down. Oh, well, you know, I'm just being a bit too demanding. I'm just being a bit too, you know, forgiving. I'm just, you know, I just want too much time for myself or this can wait. And what Spirit is saying right now is to carve out 10 minutes, 10 minutes for yourself every day where you start to kind of lay your house in order, lay what you desire in order, build the fire, okay? Build the bonfire and then light it to be able to light your passion, your dreams, and make them a beacon for yourself to move forward in. And this then leads you to being rather nostalgic, Okay, looking at the past, looking at what you want, but there's also going to be a beauty here. There's also going to be a sense of, yes, you become very nostalgic and you can become very melancholy. So do be mindful of this, where it can be like, oh my gosh, you know, that's heavy, that's deep, that's, that's too much. And then there is a sense of, well, that's beautiful. That time, that expression, that understanding, that imagery, that, that you know, that way of loving, that's beautiful. And so you start to look at it as there's beauty planted within your soul. And now it's time to let it shine. Because it's sad when you think about it. You think of this little boy with his puppy and they grow up together. And all of a sudden, you know, you have, you know, this 
this man who looks to be in middle years, you know, with a full-grown dog. So this could be, you know, when he got the, the puppy for his son, and it became his dog, and all of a sudden, you know, and you can make up a whole story. It's like, well, he might not even have wanted the dog, and it was more for his kid, and now they're best friends, and, but time moves on, and time always moves on. And that's sometimes a very hard place to be in. And, you know, it's, it's making me choked up right here. It can lay a burden on your shoulders because there are times when we want to stop the clock. You know, we want things to just freeze. And there's an old proverb, there's an old saying that says, you know, the days are long, but the years are short. And sometimes it really feels this way. Sorry, I'm getting emotional here because it's emotional. It's like you've carried so much because you love so deeply. There, there is so much here for you. And there's a nostalgia, there's a, you know, a sense of maybe I could have done more and maybe I should have done more and maybe I could have been this or maybe I could have been that. Stop it. Stop it. Look at the seeds of love that you've planted. Look at the grace of beauty within your soul. Start to ignite your life within your passion. Start to make time to have the light of you shine bright. Because you have the repeat of the number six. That is the most caring, compassionate, loving number. And we go from the six of cups to the six of wands. And the six of wands here with the hands raised up, praising, you know, success and bounty and jubilation and celebration and opening of the throat chakra, the heart, the heart chakra, all the chakras actually pretty much here when you, you stand. But definitely the throat chakra and the heart chakra and the third eye chakra as you're embracing what it is that you desire, as you're raising yourself up in jubilation to where you are. And this is saying it's time to start celebrating. Instead of sitting there and saying, I should have done more. Okay, hindsight is always twenty twenty, And we could always do more, right? But we run the risk of breaking. Here it's starting to celebrate ourselves. When Spirit shows me and really defines for me, the, the Six of Wands. It's saying, what type of boss do you want to be in your life? Are you going to be that boss that praises, that says, wow, well, job... Well, <laughs> oh, I'm getting so excited, tongue-tied. Job well done. You know, look at what you did. Look at how far you've come. Look at how much you've learned. Look at how well you do. You know, sitting there and giving tasks that can be accomplished instead of the impossible boss, the one who makes everybody miserable. The one where you just see the whole atmosphere in the office change. It is a boss that belittles you, you know, infuriates you, angers you. And what you're looking at here is the power to say, who am I going to be to me? How am I going, am I going to raise myself up? Or am I going to knock myself down? Why? How? Am I going to take away my dreams and my passion? Am I going to let the naysayers and the negativity that was spoken over me become my anthem? Or am I going to rise up? In my truth? In my glory? In my understanding? Because that's what you're doing here. You're having this shift. Because there can be a time in your inner self. Because you're very contemplative. You're very meditative. Okay? You're, you're very much looking inward. Which is what a lot of people don't do. A lot of people look outward. They look outward for their happiness. They look outward for their validation. They look outward for everything. And then they, they feel hurt when they don't get exactly what they need from everybody else. Here, you're not doing that. You're not looking outward. You're looking inward. And you're sitting there and you're being very, very serious about what you want and what you desire and where it is that you want to be. So this is a time where you can put all the weight upon your shoulders and almost feel yourself cracking, like almost feel like it's too much. And for some of you Aquariuses, Aquariuses, Aquarians, there we go, that is exactly what you're doing. It's too much. And it's at that breaking point where you feel yourself shattering a bit. But then you realize, oh my gosh, I'm being reborn. I'm being reborn into my understanding. I'm being reborn into my power. I'm being reborn into myself. And that's when you really embrace the King of Cups. And the King of Cups is saying, I'm King of one person and one person alone. And that is me. Have you ever tried to get a little kid to do what they don't want to do. My nephew, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, year and a half, most stubborn little boy in the whole entire world. Adore him, 
Absolutely. Absolutely. But he will not do what he does not want to do. And you can sit there and argue with him till, you know, you turn blue in the face. But if you sit there and say to him, you know, kind of speak it out and be kind and, you know, more reasoning to him, you know, he gets it more. And that's what we have to do to us. Because what we do is we do what we're trained to do in this world. We fight. You know, you will do this, you will do that, and we will move forward this way. And that's what we say to ourselves. You know, we give ourselves to-do lists, and we never start off small. We always start off, like, you know, half a mile long, and it's like, and if you don't do this, you failed. And the king of cups is saying, I rule me. So I have to rule me kindly. I have to rule me with an understanding of my heart and a passion of my soul. And so I will discuss with me. I will understand where I'm coming from and why I'm coming from there. And I will crown myself with the glory of my beauty and the passion of my existence. And I will move myself forward in a way that shows growth, shows understanding, and shows power to me. It doesn't mean that anybody else has to understand it or has to see it. And this is when you become a king of one because you are ruling you. And that's hard enough. If everybody ruled themselves as if they were the most precious piece of real estate, you know, on this earth, like cared for it, cared for ourselves, as if we were a treasure, do you know how much better the world would be? And yet we're always afraid, oh my gosh, you know, this person's going to get more than me. This person's going to do this more than me. This, this, that, that. It's like, no, step back and center. Center you. Embrace you your passion, your beauty, your power, your understanding. Because it's hard to rule ourselves. We sit there and we tell ourselves, oh, I'm not going to eat french fries, eat french fries. You know, I'm going to exercise this amount of, you know, hours every day or minutes every day, doesn't. You know, sits there, I'm going to get this much work done, procrastinates a bit. We do it all the time. So if we do it to ourselves, you know, why do we expect others not to? Rule us. Rule the individual and you will find that you wind, you wind up being a beacon and a leader for so many more Aquarius. Because that's also part of your path. To be the star in the sky that guides. That guides the ship's home. That, you know, the pyramids were built around. That guides. Because your passion, your power, and your brilliance is shining during this time. You're a defender of your reason for getting out of bed in your morning. In the morning. Your passion, your brilliance, your determination. And that fire is shining and being a part of you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it leads you to the magician. As you have this fire burning inside, as you're defending your passion, as you're moving forward rather quickly, it's the second fastest moving night. The fastest moving night is the night of swords. You have the magician coming in. As above, so below. As you believe it, so it becomes. And as you believe it, so you see it. So you understand it. So here... When we have nostalgia, it's kind of like, oh, I could have done the past better. Okay, maybe. I mean, who knows? But it's done. Those chapters are written. You know, that movie is already made. That book is already written. So here, it is the magic in the centering of the now. And it's not for the future, because the future can consume. You know, when we're trying to work out our future, we miss our present. We forget to live. Here, it is embracing of our passion, of our emotions, of our mind, of our grounding and stabilizing of ourselves, all encompassed by spirit, all moving us forward to being the star of man, right? If you had him spread his legs and his, his legs and his arms up and his head held high, you would see a star, a star in the sky, the star of the elements with spirit at its head. And that's what we are as human beings. That's what we are as we stand before the altar of our existence and we claim our power and we call this power forward and we embrace our eternity because we embrace the fact that God's head is hidden within us. Brahma said, I hide the God's head within man because that is the one place he will not look for it. And that's true. That is the place we never look. We always look externally, not internally. And it leads you to the temperance card. It leads you to temperance. It leads you to balance. It leads you to deeper knowledge, deeper understanding. It's so cool because in the Rider-Waite-Smith deck, 
Aquarius, you pour the waters out into the world. And temperance is a beautiful counterpart for you imagery-wise, okay? In the imagery of the essence of who you two are. Because you pour the waters out into the world. And temperance pours the waters from cup to cup. Never spilling, never losing. Always healing, always maintaining. And that's what you're doing here. That's what your angels are helping you, helping you do. Wrapping their wings around you. Moving the beauty of day and night into a beautiful rhythm. Not, a, not something to be conquered or something to be doubted. Or, you know, here's where you have to do everything. And here's where you have to fret about everything to be done. You know, day is for doing, night is for fretting. It's like, no. There is a beauty and a balance and a depth and a brilliance that you are putting into the rhythm of your life. You're pouring into yourself as your angels surround you, as the angels guide you, as your angels truly speak to you. And you become a, you become a student of your heart. You become a student of your passion. You become a student of what you desire. You look at what you truly love. And you come to things with a beginner's mind. And in Buddhism, a beginner's mind is coming to things almost like a child. It's without the preconceived notions. It's not with, you know, oh, I already know this truth. It's I come to things with a sense of new beginnings unfolding, new power becoming, new truth being spoken. And you thought this would never happen. You know, when pigs fly, I'll be able. I'll be able to embrace what I love. I'll be able to study what I love. I'll be able to move forward in my love. And that time is now because you are making time for it. And it is rooting you to this earth. And I love how you are both master and student. You know, master and apprentice. There is so much that you are learning. And it, you're learning it from you. There can also be a very powerful water sign energy here. Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. But really spirit shows that you're learning it from you. And it moves you to turning inward. It moves you to silencing the world. It moves you to sitting there and saying to, you know, the public arena, I need my time. And you might be sitting there and thinking, okay, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, being more alone is not what I want. But this isn't, a hermit is never truly alone. They are a seeker, a quester, a questioner. And that's what you're going to find for you. It doesn't mean that you don't have to be around people. It means that even when you are around people, you're going so deeply within yourself, within your understanding, that you're going to be just a bit different. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're not going to vibrate on the same frequency as them. There's a depth to you. There's a deeper understanding to you that's really coming forward. And as you embrace this quiet, as you embrace this understanding, you begin the fool's journey. You begin to walk forward towards where you need to be, where you want to be body, mind, and spirit. You begin the hero's path. And every hero is a fool before they start succeeding. Every hero is a crazy dreamer before their dreams come true. And that is the energy that you are embracing inside of you. It's like, how do I move forward? How do I know that I won't fail? Every time you take a leap, you will fail. You know, every time you jump, you have to hit the ground again. And sometimes we hit it smoothly, you know, beautiful landing, absolutely get it. Sometimes we, hit, we land rough and we twist our ankle. And what you're seeing here is you're seeing a healing of you. And you're also seeing the power to be able to take that leap of faith on you again, for you again. And you're doing it in the public arena. It's like, this is my life. I claim it. I own it. I move forward in it. And what you're doing here is you're planting a seed of greatness. You're planting a seed of hope, dreams, and desires for you to become so much more than what you had thought. For you to look at what's truly important to you and to plant it in your garden, to plant it in your truth, to have it move with, as a part of you, with you, to grow with you. And it leads you to being a student, a student of your ideas, a student of your ideologies, a student of what you desire from life, you have a light bulb moment that lights your way. I love that she's being led by ideas and she's 
being grounded by knowledge. And that's exactly what's happening with you. Led by ideas and grounded by knowledge, always empowered by truth. It leads you to embracing the essence of yourself, your soul's wish being heard, your greatest passion, your greatest power, and the hard work that you put into your life, paying off, shining a light down on you, weaving in every element of your existence to have that beautiful, intricate, powerful, brilliant tapestry become a part of your life, your soul, and yourself. This is divinity saying, I see you. I see your soul. I see what you need. It might not be what you want. Okay, those are different things. But this is what you need. And this is what you've been building towards. And other people will sit there and say, oh, well, I did this. I was the reason you're successful. It's like, no. No, you could definitely, they could definitely deserve a thank you, most definitely. But if you didn't run with it, if you didn't move with it, if you didn't let, you know, passion and beauty and creation become a part of you, you wouldn't be there. And it would be another distant star in the sky that was never truly seen. And that's not you. There's a brilliance here. There's a power here that at times you're unprepared for. And when you start off this journey, you're definitely going to feel weighted down. But there's something more shining to you that is exquisite. It really is exquisite. Let's go deeper. Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. And then let's see the people you have to be mindful of during this time. Aquarius. Who does Aquarius have to be mindful of? November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. Who does Aquarius have to be mindful of? November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Awesome. And so we have here the Prince of Swords, Air Sign Energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is an energy that's very attractive to you because it's an Air Sign Energy. Air Sign Energy calls to Air Sign Energy. And you're going to sit there and think, this is truth. You know, they're moving forward just as quickly as I want, you know, things to be moving forward. But there's a sense of, of really not thinking things through. And this person kind of says one thing and then does the other. And if you start to follow this person, you know, and really look at them, watch them, listen to them, there's going to be an inconsistency, inconsistency, there we go, that you don't like. But there's also somebody, now this could be in your personal life, very much so, where you're like, yes, and then you're like, wait a minute, what? What are you talking about? Like, what are you doing? Slow it down. Slow it down is what they need to do. Yeah. And then you have the King of Pentacles, Earth, Sign, Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is somebody who is too rigid, okay? They see the interconnectedness of things. They take their responsibilities very seriously, which, I mean, is a good thing, right? But it is also something where they kind of, they want more of you. They're, they're sitting there and they're being rather judgy right now. And you're looking at them and you're like, what the heck is wrong with you? You know, what are you expecting that you think I should be producing? And it can be, that you're listening to somebody and they say something and it just like cuts deep and you're going to realize that they're speaking and it can be in a completely different context but it hits you it hits a wound within you and it's like oh wow oh wow and that's around prosperity that's around bounty that's around the way that you move forward oh that's so interesting the king of pentacles in the negative with the 
with the Taurus energy in the positive. So it can be even this time, uh, like during this time, there we go, this, the sign of Taurus could be somebody who's very, you know, stubborn and passionate and powerful and they're moving forward, but there can also be this rigidity to them that you need to be mindful of, okay? It's like things have to be done a certain way. And you're, there, there is going to be this question of like, what are you expecting of me? Like, I don't know what you want. And there is a sense of even if you did know what they wanted, that's not you. That's not you. you you're, like, you're like the bird in the sky. This person is like a tree. You can't make a bird into a tree. You just can't. And then you have the knight, the, not the knight, the king of wands. And the king of wands is somebody passionate, determined, and this is just a person who loses their temper rather quickly is what I'm seeing. They're going to be hot-headed and they're going to be like, well, this is right. And not have a conversation, just have a, a force of, of personality. The two of cups, the magician, again, I love this, repeating, you have Pisces energy here. We did, Spirit did say before that Pisces energy could be very intense and it's over the, the king of cups. So yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely intense energy with Pisces. You have yourself shining through again. You're deeply connected to your heart. You're, you're finding your voice is what you're doing. And yeah, you're lessening that load, the 10, the eight of swords and the 10 of wands. Knight of wands again, moving you forward here. You were, you were protected by it, by your passion, by your, your fire and your desire in your heart. And here you're, you're moving forward with it in your, your personal self. In, well, not your personal self, in the public arena, but it's very personal for you as you move forward. There's an awakening that's coming. And that awakening has you break the chains of addictions and doubts and fears and chaos and upset and upheaval and move to power and beauty and understanding and passion and brilliance and a true connection with the, the chaos of this world. And it's not a negative thing. It's actually a very beautiful, positive thing with the devil card right here. There's a healing that's coming. We start off with the Two of Cups. It's as you move forward, it's as, you know, kind of this nostalgia comes forward and what you are releasing and the, the past that, you know, we all kind of want to go back to moments, not, maybe not all of it. And we tend to look through life at, with rose-colored rose -colored glasses. But here, there's a sense of healing. There's a sense of learning more, diving deeper, gaining a better understanding. And as you do, you embrace your magic. You embrace, you embrace your passion. You hold your hands up in acceptance of this gift. And as above, so below. As you receive it, so you become. As you embrace the elemental truth of you. As you embrace the spiritual truth of you. You rise to new heights. You rise to new awareness. You rise to a new being that you hadn't anticipated, that you hadn't thought could be. You stand before the altar of your existence and you're empowered. But fear comes with that. It's like, oh my gosh, what if I muck this up? You know, how do I move forward? How do I move past fear? We never fully move past fear. We address it. We face it. And we say, you don't have the power over me. I thought you did when you got to be more of a nightmare than a reality. And this is seeing that by the silvery light of the moon, you know, you know there is a, what is it, the silver... Spirit is saying the silver dewdrop of understanding, like the silver droplet of the moon, moves us forward. And there is a sense here by addressing fears, doubts, apprehensions, anxieties, that you see yourself becoming more than what you had thought that you could be. And you see yourself breaking through the barriers, the chains that weighed you down, that kept you small, that kept you from really going after and shining like the star that you are. And as you embrace the essence of yourself, your magic shines through, okay? The God's head within you starts to become the place that you look. It's like, it's not externally, it's internally that the answers are found. And there's a passion, there's a power, there's a brilliance to you that moves you forward. And it has you looking at nightmares because the Eight of Swords, we can live in the Eight of Swords our whole entire lives. And we know a lot of people who do, you know, and these are people who let doubt and fear and anger and upset and upheaval rule them forever. And the Eight of Swords is staying caught within your own mind and not realizing that you can be freed. And so here, 
this is what temperance is showing you. This is what the balancing of yourself is showing you. It's taking you out of the darkness and into, and into the light and into this purging of the negativity within and into a sense of realizing that, yes, I can move forward. Yes, I can be more than I anticipated. Yes, there is greatness within me. And I put down the burdens that I carry. And I become a student of my heart, of my truth, of what I deeply want. Because as you move forward in passion, as you move forward in determination, you are very secular. You know, you would think the night of, of wands would mean that you connect with a whole bunch of people because you move forward in this passionate fire and they're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? I want to be a part of it. But this is very personal for you. And again, in the public arena, people might sit there and be like, wow, you know, Aquarius, why are you so remote? You know, you're not. You're, you're planning your adventure. You're moving forward in a passionate power. You're opening up a door that you thought, oh, well, this could never be opened. You know, I could never move forward this way. And you're finding that you can. And this is you awakening into your passion, your power, your brilliance as you grow your truth, as you plant your seeds. And this is your angels being right there with you. And it connects you to this earth. Okay, I do see the devil card. You know, it's Capricorn energy, yes, December 22nd to January 19th. And for those of you born on the cusp with Capricorn, this is very powerful. But I always think that Capricorn gets a little bit of a rough deal getting the devil card as their major arcana card. Because there's a negative connotation with the devil. But there's a sense here of being very connected to what this earth is about what people are about, what we desire. Like, it's how to play the game. And there's nothing bad about knowing how to play the game. Sometimes, you know, you know, we sit there as individuals who don't, and we're like, wow, that would be an awesome thing to be able to have, an awesome skill. And so here, as you embrace your truth, as you look at the addictions of the world, it's not just simple us addictions, though it can be, and there's nothing simple really about it. But it, it's not simply about us. It is about more. It's about the trappings that we all fall into. It's about sitting there and saying, you have to be like this at this time, like this at this time, like this at this time. It's like, no, I have to be me now. I'm embracing my fire. I'm embracing my passion. I'm embracing my determination. And I'm moving forward in that truth. And I'm freeing myself from what has once bound me. And it could be, you know, addictions of drugs, alcohol, food, sex, you know, shopping, it could be addictions of self-doubt, of self-sabotage, of procrastination, of anger, of despair, of, you know, of heartbreak. And you're seeing yourself purge it with fire, purge it with determination to live your best life and to have that passion guide you forward. Now let's see what your spirit animal message is. Aquarius, November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Aquarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020, Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic, those three. So we start here with the fox spirit. Think on your feet. There's a lot coming at you at this time. Think on your feet. Don't be afraid to, you know, sit there and change plans and look at things in a different way. The rhino spirit, overcome any obstacle. You are overcoming any obstacle thrown at you. And you're going to doubt that you can, but you can. So it's awesome. It's like you have a tougher skin. There's a, a fierceness to you that, that you hadn't anticipated. And you're kind of surprised by it. And you're like, wow, this is kind of awesome. And then it leads you to the giraffe spirit. See the big picture. See the big picture of what you are creating. See the bigger picture. You know, don't, don't get caught up in the minutia or don't get caught up in the future or in the past. See the big picture of the now. You know, and if, even when you're in the now, don't get caught up in, in the pettiness of things. Look at what it is that you desire. So you're looking at everything. And yet, you're looking at everything as you focus on you. And so that's really cool. It's like, and yet you're not being stopped. It's like you're taking it all in. Your subconscious spirit animal message is the bat spirit. A rebirth is assured. You are being reborn into a powerful understanding. It leads you then to your subconscious chakra message, which is 
angels and masters, angels and divinity, wrapping their wings around you, guiding you, connecting you. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above your crown. There's a powerful healing here. There's a powerful protection as you move with the grace of your angels around you. And that's cool. It leads you to your subconscious person message, and that's the chariot. You move forward. This is Cancer Energy, June 21st to July 22nd. You move forward with a fierceness of heart, a determination of self that is shocking, okay? There is more to you than you realize. And as you embrace it, and as it graces you, okay, you realize that you are a warrior queen, king, person, that you are that you are amazing and your heart will not be stopped. It leads you to the subconscious terror message, which is the eight of wands. Subconsciously, things start moving fast. And as we go deeper into your subconscious, it brings us the chariot again. There's a fierceness, determination, passion, power, brilliance to you that is moving you at a speed that you had not anticipated and is bringing you towards what your heart most definitely wants. There's a repeat of, a number, of the number seven within your inner self and within your subconscious self. Truth is going to be of the utmost importance to you and you're going to have a very, very great need for spiritual connection. All right, Aquarius. Well, this was lovely. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a releasing of negative energy as we take in our positive energy, as we grow, become, and demand to stand in our truth, our power, and our understanding as we open up our hearts, as we embrace our souls, and as we realize that fear has no place here and will not hold us back. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Aquarius.